<clears throat> While today's sentencing brings an end to the court process, it will never change the horrific outcome of that day which led to Matty being murdered. It's hard for me to stand here and try to put into words or a statement what effect losing Matthew has had on us all, let alone the manner in which he was taken. There are no words which can describe it, but all I can say is that we will never be the same people we were before his cruel and callous murder. When Matthew became a police officer, we were so proud of him. Naively, I never thought once that doing the job he loved and dedicated himself to while protecting our communities would ultimately see his life taken from him. He was only 28 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him and so much more to offer to this world. It's so disturbing to hear that our police officers are still facing the same threats on a very regular basis. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the three police officers shot and injured in Glen Eden last week. Wish them, I wish them a speedy recovery and I send them my best wishes. As a mother, I cannot describe the terrible feeling of loss of losing a child. I don't want another mother to ever get the news that their strong, kind and brave son is never coming home again. I will continue to work hard in Matthew's memory and for David and all their police friends and colleagues to make sure that they have every chance of being able to protect themselves and the public they serve. I want to thank the police investigation team for the hard work they've done to get us to this point today and for all their ongoing love and support throughout this terrible ordeal. We would also like to acknowledge the Oriwa and wider Rodney community for the kindness they have shown us since Matthew's death. We now face our second Christmas without Matthew, but he is with us in our thoughts and hearts and he will never be forgotten. <clears throat> Well, that was the basis of my petition, um, so I suppose that says what I would have liked, but um, it, it isn't like that in New Zealand, um, and so no sentence will bring Matthew back. Um, I, think ju I think Justice Venning was, um, was very, very uh, clear in his sentencing. He used the sentencing laws, he took them as far as he could. Um, I think that uh, we're all happy that it's 27 years without parole. Um, and Justice Venning was very clear that he had to take in the manifestly unjust um, consideration on the three strikes legislation. The good thing is that he used the three strikes legislation and he made it clear this was about uh, sentencing a recidivist offender, uh, which he was of course. Well, I mean, you know, he, he just reinforced what I said, so I felt vindicated. Mm. That, you know, the, the to, to, say, to say sorry um, was, I said, vacuous and self-serving, and I still believe that. And to mention um, restorative justice is just a cliche kind of thing. It wasn't meant, and Justice Finning picked up on that. Yeah, I think Justice Venning was very clear that he didn't feel that the, uh, the apologies were authentic um, and he made it very clear too that he put Diane and Ellie, um, all the friends and family, Robert, Sam, through a, court, through a court case that actually probably didn't need to happen um, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to try and diminish his own culpability in the uh, sentence that he was going to receive. Mm -hmm. I. I spoke to Warren Epiha after and shook his hand and I said to him that it's not his um, crime to bear, um, that his nephew has to take responsibility and that I didn't want him as his uncle to bear 
the shame. It's not his to bear. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, it just shows you how loved Matthew is. I mean, you know, whoever met Matthew liked him immediately. He had no enemies. Mm. Well, I, like I said at the beginning, I was there to represent Matthew and he shot my son in his back and I wanted to face him and to let him know, you know, I mean, what he did to Matthew, I, there are no words really, I, I don't know how to explain, I, I've lost my son and, and it's totally unnecessary, um, yes, it's just... I don't. I haven't got the words. Mm. I, mean, I, was, I was talking to Diane last night, and that's exactly what she said: is that um, as a mother, how do you find the words to express um, what not she, her, Ellie, uh, Robert, Sam, Regan, uh, everyone that you see standing here today? Um, and, and Sam probably captured it the best when he said, yeah. "We've got milestones coming in the future that we're not going to have Matthew there to be part of mm. um, with us." And this was a. Uh, and I thought that um, David's. Um, statement to uh, Ebiha was very strong too in terms of he confronted him and said you're a coward mm. and he is a coward mm. and uh, he shot Matthew who was unarmed and hunted David down mm. both them unarmed police officers that were actually going to assist him and he um, and he hunted them down and, and shot and killed them in the most cowardly way yes yes I don't. I think of his of his actions, but as a person, I have no interest in him as a person. Uh, he's nobody. Um, yeah. I mean, but what he did that day, of course, is different. But uh, I, I don't want to know any of his family history, and I want to know nothing. Is nothing of interest to me. Mm. Mm. Pardon. Well, as you heard, he was only seven months out of a previous firearm offence, so you decide. He was, he was on his second strike, and um, mm. when, you see him, when you saw him leave the court today, he was, um, he was obviously defiant and he was giving um, gag signals. So, uh, you know, that, that probably gives you a good indication of just how much remorse is sitting with uh, Ebihar at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.